Hello, this is Keith Johnson and in this help movie we're going to be looking at the four main steps in using Timetabler. There are four main steps in any timetabling sequence and here they are down the left hand side. One, two, three, four main steps, each with a subsidiary step. So let's look at them in turn, starting with basic data. This is where you'd come first of all when you first purchase Timetabler and you need to tell Timetabler how many days you have in your school cycle, how many periods in each day, where are the breaks and lunches in each day. And you do that once, it might take you three minutes and that'll be it. Then you need to tell Timetabler the names of the subjects that you want to refer to onto the timetable, the names of the rooms that you have, or the numbers of the rooms that you have available, the names of the staff that you have available and the classes that you want to schedule. And you normally do this once when you get hold of Timetabler first of all, but thereafter you'd only come back here very rarely, for instance when staff resign or new staff are appointed, or if you change the curriculum to add new subjects to the curriculum. Actually these three of subjects, rooms and teachers, you can if you wish import them from uh, an MIS. If your management information system has got that information that is it usually will have, you can export it from your MIS and import it using this button here in order to save you typing those three things in. Also on the screen you can look at the online help movies, of which this is one. There's a whole library of uh, help movies about every screen in Timetabler. There's a How Do I booklet which is very useful and there's the latest version of the Quick Start Guide you get by clicking on there. So that's the basic data step. It has a subsidiary step about availability. So for instance if you want to say something about the staff availability about part-time teachers. For instance, if Mrs. Jones doesn't come in on Fridays, then you can tell Timetabler that Mrs. Jones is not available on a Friday, and then Timetable will not let you accidentally use Mrs. Jones on a Friday. And the same thing with any other part-timer, including floating part-timers. There's a similar uh, unavailability screen, so you can say when classes are unavailable. So if, for instance, you know, the classes in your year 7, 8 and 9 go home early on Friday afternoon, while years 10 and 11 continue working, then you can specify on that screen there that the, the final lesson on a Friday afternoon is not available for years 7, 8 and 9, but it is still available for years 10 and 11. And similarly with room availability, you have some rooms unavailable during the week because of community use, for example, then you can specify it there. In this section here, you can specify special resources which behave like dummy teachers and they're very useful for specifying timetabling tricks. For instance, if you have two deputy heads and you want to make sure that one or other of them is always free every lesson of the week to do any firefighting, then there's a simple timetabling trick there that will make sure that timetable always leaves one or other of them free, assuming they have enough free periods of course, so that they can deal with any problems that arise in school. Special locations are similar, but they behave like classes. And so you can use these for specifying any coming together of staff that doesn't involve children. For instance, if you want to schedule a senior management team or a senior leadership group uh, meeting uh, once a week, for example, then you'd use a special location which specify, so you can specify which staff you want to come together um, without any children. Similarly, if you want to specify departmental meetings. This section here is about teacher pools. Uh, if, for instance, uh, for teaching art in year seven, if it doesn't matter which art teacher teaches 7a, which one teaches 7b, which one teaches 7c and so on, then you can tell Timetable of that and Timetable will choose the teacher that makes most sense from a scheduling point of view, the one that makes it easy to do the scheduling. So you can specify pools of art teachers or drama teachers or any other department. And the final button here allows you to specify the teachers in each department, which can help later on when you come to print out deep mark departmental timetables. So that's the availability subscreen, and to say basic data, you'd normally only visit at the beginning and then rarely there afterwards. And similarly with the activity section. The activity section is where you tell Timetabler what are the activities or lessons that you want to schedule in for this particular timetable, this year's timetable. And you specify on here whether maths is in single periods or double periods this year, whether maths is taught with five sets across four classes, things like that. So you can specify on there in the activity batches what you actually want to schedule for this year and Timetable will also draw for you a curriculum diagram so that you can check that you have got the correct curricular structure for your particular school. That data again you can reuse very often from one year to the next. Once you've entered it you can promote it for the following year or clone it and reuse it and there's a separate help movie that explains how to do that. That step also has a sub-step, check and validate, 
And on this screen here you can apply a whole range of pre-timetabling checks. You can check the statistics, you can look at the curriculum diagram as I mentioned a moment ago, you can look at the staff loading screen to check that the teaching load for each member of staff is fair, you can draw combing charts either for individual departments or for pairs of departments or for triplets of departments, conflict matrix, you can look at team combinations, you can look at staff deployment and calculate the contact ratio and so on, look at day blocking, you can look at Zaraga's rule. And all those timetabling checks are explained in the timetable manual or in help movies and they're also explained in detail in the timetablers cookbook which is a book about timetabling as opposed to timetabler the software the timetablers cookbook so that was that step there then uh, the third step is the actual scheduling of this year's timetable this is where you actually decide that the maths will go on monday morning or tuesday afternoon or thursday morning this is the step we actually schedule to particular times of the week and you can do many schedules if you want to most people do several schedules because unlike manual timetabling it's easy to do several schedules on a computer certainly most people would do some what if uh, investigations first of all before they start the timetable the one that they're actually going to impose on their colleagues and you can schedule it either using the priority list which tends to be more using keyboard or using the build, visual builder screen which uses the drag and drop and they're alternative screens in fact you can move backwards and forwards between those two if you want to but the two screens for working on the schedule interchangeable working in parallel in effect that you can move between these days most people probably use the visual builder screen but either way you can work on either of them when you've done the schedule the next step would be to check and tidy it and so there are some uh, features here there's the optimizer screen which allows you to view the rhythm and the quality of your schedule to see the pattern of lessons you can review the planning and preparation time for the teachers three buttons there to help you with the rooming there are lots of features in time to help you do the rooming quickly and efficiently there's a button here to add a period for instance normally when you're doing the schedule you wouldn't include a registration period to begin with you'd normally do the schedule and then add the registration periods in the right position after you've done the schedule don't have to but that would be the usual way of doing it and finally you can edit the day and period labels so that they show what you want them to show on your printouts so that was that step there the next step is to actually do the printouts and there are a whole range of possibilities here the range of master timetables masters of all the staff all the classes all the rooms and all the subjects or a range of individual timetables for individual teachers individual classes rooms and subjects and for each of these you can choose from billions of possibilities you can specify the font you can specify the color you can specify the position of each item in each cell to get exactly the design you want or the shape of paper you want uh, in, uh, the one that makes most sense to your colleagues um, and there, again there are separate health movies about that in addition you can also print out free staff and rooms for the person doing cover and you can print out pool timetables if you've been using teacher pools that's printing the timetables I should say also as well as uh, when you print the timetables you can print them on paper or you can print them as a web page uh, to put on the school website or to send as an email to colleagues so lots of ways or as a PDF or as an Excel file whatever way you would like to show them as well as being on paper the next step is to export the timetable and you can export it to a whole range of uh, possible management information systems sims.net Pearson Frontier E1 or Gold, Pass, Progresso, Facility, Integris, Schoolbase, ISAMS, Engage, Bromcom and so on. A whole range of possibilities down there. You select the one that you have in your particular school and then you go through the, the export sequence. There's a whole pile of documentation for each export that will explain to you exactly what to do on that. So those are the four main steps in Timetabler. In addition, there are a couple of other buttons here. There's a backup button there, which you can use to back up your data, which is always wise, just in case your computer gets lost or broken or stolen. You can keep the backup set the data separately, so you always have it to hand. And, and you can also transfer it to your machine at home if you want to work at home. And clicking on this button here takes you to the 24-7 support center, which has a huge knowledge base of hundreds of articles about timetabling and about particular aspects of the program. So you can always visit there as well as contacting the helpline, uh, the main helpline. You can also export from the screen here in various other ways. But that I think gives you a brief overview of the four main steps in using Timetable.